Hey everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created this abstract double exposure portrait in Photoshop. So what I have opened is just two stock photos that I want to blend together. One of a portrait of the sky, uh, portraits of faces work really well for this effect, and one of this kind of abstract, swirly, soapy texture that I found on a service called Death to Stock. If you guys want to find out where to get more stock photos, I have a video all about that that I'll link. So in this case, I'm just going to work right on this stock layer. I like the size of this canvas and the composition of it and everything. So I'm going to actually duplicate my original background layer so I have a fresh, clean copy of the original image for later. Now on this copy, I'm going to create an outline. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Threshold. Now this is going to turn it into a black and white image and we're going to use this with blending modes to create part of our effect. Now you could find a setting of the threshold level that shows the details of your image or person's face how you want. However, in my case, I kind of liked the messiness of the hair and I pulled it a little bit darker because we're going to bring in some of that original photo to bring in some of the details later on. So I'm going to pull it a bit darker here and make the threshold level about 160. So I'll press OK there. Now I have that pretty dark kind of ink-like stamp. And now we're going to take our texture and drag it onto this composition. Now before you go about transforming it and positioning it where you want, let's first set the blending mode. So if you know about blending modes, then since we created that black and white layer underneath, then you'll know if we set this layer to lighten or screen, then the contents of this stock image are only going to take over what is black underneath it. So as you can see, we created that perfect outline for our stock image to fall into, which leaves us with that nice cutout near the top of the hair, which looks like we perfectly cut it out. But now we want to grab the move tool and position our image into a kind of interesting placement that you think is cool for your two images. I kind of like here how this one bubble is somewhat where the eye would be and then you have these little bubble swirls kind of swirling up to the hair and it kind of looks like an explosion of color at the top of this man's hair. So I'm going to place it right about here. I think that looks pretty cool. And now we want to go back to that original copy, that clean copy that we saved for later and we're going to drag it on top of everything. Now we can't do that actually because it's locked, it's a background layer, but if you double click on it and press OK, then you can drag it on top of everything. So now we want to only show a part of this original image. So what we can do is go to Layer, Layer Mask, and we'll just create a Reveal All Layer Mask. So now that we have this layer mask enabled, we can work on it to hide certain parts of this image. So what I'm going to do to create a smooth blend is grab my gradient tool and I'm just going to set it on the default black and white. You should see it in the default settings. If not, hit your cogwheel and hit reset gradients and you'll see your default black and white and then just working on linear gradient mode, I'll find an interesting placement to blend the two photos together. So I don't really like um, the way it looked like this. You might, I don't really like it. I think the interesting part is the hair. But what I did like was when I pulled upwards and made the hair all crazy with the texture but kept the details of the bottom part of his face and neck. So I like that placement right there and you can see since we have the layer mask it's going from white to black and white reveals and black conceals. So everything that's black on this layer mask is hiding the photo and showing all this stuff underneath. Now you could keep it color to color but I kind of think it looks interesting when you make it black and white. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. Now in this adjustment layer you could play around with the channels to darken some things and lighten some tones, but I would kind of avoid that. We're going to fix the contrast later. Now I don't want everything to be black and white because I like the color of that soapy texture underneath. So what I'll do is just create a clipping mask and you can use the shortcut Option Command G on a Mac or head over to Layer Create Clipping Mask. So now I have that black and white mixed with that colored stock that I think works well in this case. You have to judge it in your case for your photos. Now 
it's kind of lacking a bit of contrast in my opinion. See the soap bubble here is so black, whereas there's no true blacks in this. So another adjustment layer I'm gonna add is a levels layer. So go to layer, new adjustment layer, levels. Now in the levels adjustment, I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze the two sliders together to create a brighter, more contrasted look, except sometimes you don't want it to affect everything. See. Sometimes you maybe don't want it to affect the ink below. So in that case, you could also create the clipping mask again so that it still only clips to the portrait by going to layer, create clipping mask or using the shortcut, which I will actually do in this case because I think it becomes too bright without doing that. So I'm going to do that. And the next thing you're going to want to do is erase the edges of your image that aren't blending out perfectly with the true whites of the rest of the background. So I used a pretty good image to start with. It had a clean background. It was a professional portrait shot. But since we have that layer mask enabled, all we got to do is grab our brush tool, grab a large and 0% hardness brush, and using black as our foreground color, paint into this layer mask to kind of erase or delete the original background of your photo and reveal that true white underneath. So in my case, it was kind of not too necessary. However, you might need that step on the photo that you're working on. Now at this point, you could call it done. It's actually pretty good. But just to blend some colors together a little bit and give it an overall finished look, I'm going to create a quick color effect by going to Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color. Now in this color picker, I'm going to choose a really dark blue, like a navy or a really dark teal. And I'm going to set this color to the blending mode exclusion. And what that's going to do is going to give us that kind of creamy vintage look, which is a color effect I've done a tutorial on before. But that's how you do that. If you want, you can adjust the opacity if it's too strong or play around with the color to your exact liking. And then as a finishing touch, if you want to add a bit more contrast to bring everything together, you can go to layer, new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast, and then just boost up that contrast slider a bit and maybe boost up the brightness slider a bit. So I'm gonna call that done for this tutorial. Of course, you could tweak things as much as you want to your liking, but hopefully you guys learned a few tips and tricks on how to create this quick, dual exposure like abstract composition in Photoshop. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like on it and check out my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for more. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or reach out to me on social media at Just Show. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.